So warm welcome to everyone. Great to have you on our webinar today. Digitization and automation is part, partly already very advanced and partly not yet so far in laboratories. But how can we create experiences in the lab, no matter the technology status, and make them a success for manufacturers and end users? We give you insights on how user experience leads to success in life science laboratories, which UX methods are important, and what are the benefits. In the following 30 minutes, we would like to tell you a bit about this topic. Afterwards, we have a Q&A session, so feel free to post questions in the chat already during our presentation. First of all, a short introduction around from our side. My name is Milena Fram and I'm working at the Fraunhofer Institute for Manufacturing Engineering and Automation IPA located in Stuttgart. My department for laboratory automation and biomanufacturing engineering focuses on digitization and automation development processes for life science and pharma laboratories. We work within a large interdisciplinary team of scientists from process engineer, computer scientists and up to user researchers. I work as a usability and user experience engineer at Fraunhofer and my daily motivation is to increase user acceptance already during the development process of laboratory equipment and software. By my side today is Christian. Um, Christian, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, I'm Christian. I'm the head of marketing from Dupertal Sicherheitstechnik. A warm welcome from me too. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, briefly, the agenda for today's webinar. At the beginning, we show the status quo in the lab 4.0. Um, then we explain how to get from user survey to develop solutions and how to increase the user acceptance already in the development process. Afterwards, we show the methods of usability testing and redesign, and, and at the end, we dis display the return on investments for manufacturers and users. So before we take a look at future technology development processes, let's take a brief look at the status quo in the lab 4.0. We have a change more and more towards a network Network Lab 4.0, where the various touch points and devices exchange data, data with each other. I guess this topic is very relevant these days, but I don't want to go in detail in this topic today. Um, you can find out more about the future lab networking in the webinar, which takes place tomorrow. Today, we focus on an important part of a Lab 4.0, us, the people. There's one thing we shouldn't forget during the increasing transformation towards the lab 4.0, the users who operate with the smart systems and techno technologies every day. We will have more and more interconnected systems, but also a connection between systems and people. So please have a look at the users now and in the future. Software and devices make laboratory life easier if they are useful, easy to use and therefore gain user acceptance. The keyword here is creating an experience. When we develop a new technology, we always be preceded by a prior user survey, like interviews, focus groups, group discussions, process analysis, analysis, site visits or contextual inquiry in order to identify the user needs and requirements. Um, we have collected a comprehensive picture of the mood with a digitalization study in life science laboratories with PTC last year, um, which can be downloaded free of charts from the Fraunhofer IPA website. There we analyzed the state of digitization and digital reality in life science laboratories and also what are the current user needs and pain points. Among other things, we were able to quantify the current challenges and non-value-added non activities in everyday laboratory work. Christian will now go into more detail on one area. Yes, thank you very much, Milena. These are results that are very interesting for us at Dupertal too, especially for the Dupertal Connect team where I work with. 
This is a team which, which is moving forward the digitalization strategy at Dubertal. Accordingly, we research the current state of the digitalization in the lab and in the industry as well. So um, in the process, we came across an interesting study by Fraunhofer IPA. One important aspect that was clearly showed was that inventory management, I will say like things like searching, handling and managing takes up an enormous part of the non-value added activities. And with 93% of the mentions represents an area by challenge. So our experts comes into play when it comes to the topic of the inventories. And for that reason, um, we would like to take you from here to a short time travel of the solution development to deal with this challenge. So as Milena mentioned, um, I come from Dupertal, and Dupertal has been known as a manufacturer of safety storage cabinets according to German and also to European standards for about 50 years. So among other things, we have developed solutions for the active and the passive storage, as you see on the left hand side. And we have also uh, developed solutions for the compressed gas cylinders and nowadays red hot silicium ion batteries. So in some cases, products are already digital in parts, e.g. when it comes to the monitoring of the ventilation or the filling levels or the temperatures. And this is where our practical experience in the daily handling of hazmats comes into play. Many users have told us unorganized processes cost valuable time, and that is exactly where we come in. Ultimately, the current challenge can be expressed relatively simple with three question words. Where is what and how much? And the solution we created is a software my Dupertal. So we have the storage facilities like storage cabinet shelves and so on, and they are combined in one individual clusters. So the cluster produce data and the store data are in a cloud accordance with the European and German general data protection regulations. And the information are showed in the display via my Dubertal in a web browser. And that works independently if you have smartphone, tablet or even a PC. And um, using the example for the digital hazmat management my Dubertal, we show the way from a non-intuitive technology to a positive experience for the staff in the lab. So the goal of the app was, or is still, management of facilities, cabinets, item types, and stock removal. First of all, was a subjective opinion from the specialists at Fraunhofer IPA. Let's have a look at the old application. At first, you see the management of the item stock, e.g. to isopropanol, and all the information which belong to that item. And um, you can see the operating flow was not entirely intuitive at that point. And with the next slide, I would like to show you the checkout process. So um, this is done with a smartphone, including the step to type in, that you see, can you here see right now, the place of use of this hazmat item. So if you check out something from the cabinet, you type in the place of use. And sometimes in this process, we have too many and sometimes we have too few input fields. And the driver process has been time consuming at that point of time. And uh, also some important functions hasn't been found or even sometimes missing. And as you can see, the color scheme of the whole application is um, black or white and red and the color scheme with the primary red was not well chosen as red is also perceived as a warning color or error during operation and as you can see it um, it is not very functional for the customer side because every time he see red he see okay there must be an error and that wasn't that's the point of time so we had identified a few problems and created a solution with the MyDubital software that answers the questions what, where and how much. And parallel to the last programming activities, we came into contact with Niklas. What is Niklas? 
Niklas is an innovation center of the Fraunhofer IPA in which manufacturers like us and users and researchers can network from the idea to the implementation and testing all in one place. There we learned also a lot of the information about user experience and usability. And of course, I'm not giving away any secrets. The software can be perfect from technical side. But if the user experience and the usability are not right, then there will be no user acceptance at all. But Milena will now show you more about how to achieve a real good user experience in combination with usability. So, Milena, how do you increase the user acceptance already during the process of the development? Yeah, so to increase the user acceptance during the development process, we use a user centered design process approach according to the mentioned Dean standard. After planning the process, we specify the context of use. If it's in or outside of the laboratories, we also identify who is the user and what is the special um, area in which he's working. Also, what are the user tasks and so on. Based on this analysis, we specify the user requirements. With those insights, we develop first design solutions in form of prototypes or interface click dummies and the most important part is the evaluation of those first design solutions from the user's point of view, for example, in form of usability testings or interviews. So there we put the user with their needs in the center of the development process. After the evaluation process, the first solution usually has to be adjusted again and only then it should go into the first implementation in the form of assembly or programming. But what is usability and user experience in a nutshell? Here's a good example of how a good usability and positive user experience can have an impact. Just imagine how troublesome it would be if you just have original rose hip berries to make a cup of tea. With a tea bag, it's efficient and a bit more user friendly, but you need further equipment. You will be very happy when you're having a spoon next to you and the label didn't fall into the cup and gets wet. But a really, really great usability and experience um, you will have with the shark fin sieve you can see on the right hand side. There you don't need a spoon and your fingers won't get wet. That's really handy and that's positive usable, isn't it? So what are the initial aspects and questions which you should consider for future technology development? First of all, who is your user? In a lab work, different people, different generations with different requirements. Make sure your user can be Chris, 35 years old, very used to smart technologies, are Chris, 35 years old, not very used to smart technologies. What is useful to your user? What meets your user needs? You need to ask yourself, what are the benefits of my smart services? The user should have those benefits at the end of the day, and it shouldn't be just a nice gimmick. Third, the user is able to use them without extensive training. Is the user able to use the product easily and intuitively? Then it's possible to create a user experience. Thank you very much for the insights. When you described the user-centered design process, you mentioned the usability testing as a good method. How does such a usability testing method proceed? Uh, let's explain it with an example. Experts have looked at the first software version of MyDubertal and identified some potential for improvement, such the operating flow um, could be intuitively, um, functions are missing and not found, and the color scheme is not always optimally chosen. To prove the opinion empirically, uh, usability testing was carried out with six test users. Jacob Nielsen, a user advocate, identified in studies that 
five test users already identify 85% of usability problems, as you can see in the graphic. It seems like a small number, but with a big impact. So we set up three user groups from young to older generation and from complete tech savvy to not, not at all tech savvy. In our point of view, it was a good cross section of the potential user group. But of course, there are also users who belong to the older generation and are tech savvy. But this distribution was simply chosen as an example for the testing. There are, of course, a lot of other varieties possible. Then we conducted um, guided interviews, um, all subjects at the same test scenario and um, the application. That is really important for the comparability. We conducted the interviews in a real test environment in our labs in Stuttgart. In the end, um, they filled out qualitative questionnaires. We evaluated quantitative and qualitative results of the interviews and created four problem groups from design aspects within to serious usability problems. At the end, everything was documented in the form of a prioritized list with optimization suggestions for the developers. Okay, fine. So the next level is to name the problems that you have found and to improve them. What will be the procedure for that? Based on the results of the usability testing, we rethought and redesigned the user flow in the complete software. We created a rough concept of different screens, as you can see here um, at number one. Also, we had fast testing loops with the end users and for short iterations. Then we created mood boards and style guides for the new color scheme and for the increase of attractiveness. After that, we merged the rough concept with the style guide. You can see this in number three and worked out the concept in more de detail to a fine concept, including again the testing loops with the end users. And at the end, um, we created a final, a final documentation with exact instructions of the behavior of the interaction elements for the developers. So here you can see now a short excerpt of the revised application inclusive the redesign. Of course, care was taken in the case that the concept does not completely deviate from the origin. We worked with the basic structure and tried to improve it as much as possible. Immediately visible the color change, but still remained in the corporate design of Dubertal. This video is an excerpt from a tutorial um, for the solution. And of course, the update of the color scheme will be the first impression you can catch. So the start page and the sidebar significantly changed and um, big problems were when you have to add uh, the locations um, and that was that that has been completely revised. Mm, the compartments view designed um, was designed with a better structure. You can see here. And uh, then a small excerpt from mobile, uh, the responsive design uh, with adaptive to different device sizes. And for example, the flow in the storage and retrieval process was also redesigned. So thank you. So uh, next issue will be a, a very important question, I think. But what about the return on investment for usability and user experience services? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so the advantages for the end users include the following. Um, there will be savings in operating time and operating errors, especially the laboratory safety aspect is very important. 
a higher user acceptance for the technologies will be created is there is better usability and attractiveness. Usability and user experience um, conformed technologies are becoming more and more important sales arguments, especially in the future of the laboratory. And um, the customers know also ex the customers now also expect a standard there, as they know it from their B2C products. After we redesigned the Maldiva test software, we conducted a comparative testing to show the improvements for the user from the old to the new software. So as you can see here in this graphic, the time per interview task was shortened. The old application is shown in dark green and the new application in light green. In average, the operation time was shortened by 53%. In one quantitative survey, we explored um, the inti intuitiveness. Um, here you can also see the, um, the green, uh, dark green is the old application and uh, uh, light, uh, light green is the new application. And compa comparing here also the old and the new application, you can see that the intuitiveness uh, raised by 18%. In uh, the other quantitative survey, we explored um, the attractiveness. Um, the attractiveness has also increased significantly by 22%. Um, yeah, the figures definitely show the added value from the usability testing and the redesign method. However, the user-centric process also has an enormous impact on the development process. Already before the development process starts, um, graphically based requirements analysis for hardware and software are created for the engineers. Um, also, you can save very expensive development loops. Um, Dubatel has spent 25% of development funds for more for the re remodeling for the necessary redesign shortly before the release. Um, also, the rule of 10 of the error cost states that the error costs for a not discovered error increase from one stage of the creation of value to the next by the factor 10. So the earlier an error is detected and eliminated, the more cost affected is it for the organization. Studies also show um, that it is worth spending 10% of the budget on usability, which pays off enormously in the end. For example, KPIs increased um, by 135%. And now we have a look on the return of invest for the labs with such a digitization solution. Yes, thank you very much. So we really appreciate the improvements made by Fraunhofer, IPA, uh, for the user experience, for the better usability of the software. And uh, with that improvements, we have created an efficient technically software with high user acceptance. And um, but now comes the interesting part for all the business people out there, the return of the investment. So um, it's quite an, an, an easy uh, sample and quite an easy thought to identify the return on investment. So first of all, uh, you should evaluate numbers. And here's a common use case which I would like to show you. So maybe uh, in our thoughts, we have five people for lab staff and one lab manager. And uh, you surely know the annual salaries. And now comes the exciting part of it. So. In the next step, you have to identify it's the non-value added activities, e.g. 25%, and of which again, prorated to inventory management. So then you can see the average cost per employee or complete per month. So if you now set a goal that 50% of that should be optimized, so um, so-called money saved, then you can compare the amounts and you will know what a smart solution may cost. Um, this calculator system you will find on dupertal-connect.com and uh, you can type in your data and you can easily find out what will be your return on investment. And um, so enjoy it. 
we're coming to the end right now and thank you for following us today so far. We are happy to answer any question you may have on these issues. Please feel free to ask. Thank you very much.